on an all new downright sports. I talk about the Super Bowl. We preview, I pick who's going to win, and then we also discuss the halftime show. Is Maroon 5 really what we wanted to watch? I don't think so. Let's get it going. To an all new downright sports. It is the Super Bowl preview show. <clears throat> Stratagamsy, yada yada yada. Something seems to have to do every year. Woo! Anyway, I'm your host, Brent Reed. If this is the first time you've ever seen this show, it is definitely a show from a fan's perspective. And I just give my thoughts, little facts, little opinions, blend them all together. And what do you get? A typical sports show. Anyway, the Super Bowl is this coming Sunday. So if you're watching this, the show where I filmed it on the 28th uh, on a Monday of January 2019, year of our Lord. But in any case, uh, the Super Bowl is this Sunday, and we have the battle of the uh, New England Patriots uh, taking on the Los Angeles Rams, a team that just went back to Los Angeles only just three years ago. Just three years ago, they were like a four-win team with a head coach that said the current quarterback, Jared Goff, couldn't play. That coach, no longer in the league. The new coach is the same age as me. How about that? This is kind of interesting because what we have here is the battle of Boston and LA. And it's a battle that has that can start started in the NBA, but now has gone into football and even baseball because just this past year, the World Series was played between the Boston Red Sox and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And just like tradition, the Red Sox would win because Boston has continuously beaten an L.A. team when it comes to the finals. It's actually quite impressive. If you look, because most of the games were played between the Celtics and the Lakers, but the Celtics are 9-3 versus L.A. in the NBA Finals. So if you add the, uh, the Red Sox beating the Dodgers and then the New England Patriots beating the Rams, Back in the early 2000s. I know what you're going to say. Well, that Rams team was in St. Louis. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to count it. Basically, they're 11-3. and three, And LA just can't seem to beat a Boston team. I digress. We move on. This past season, <clears throat> we got to see two teams. Two different, completely different teams. And it's actually kind of cool. It's like a movie almost. You got the wily agent veteran team of the New England Patriots. We got Tom Brady, who was in touchdowns, was 10th in touchdowns, passes, 7th in passing yards. And then he's going to, with the veteran, a uh, 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 great head coach of Bill Belichick, taking on the young, scrappy, new uh, style of quarterback in Jared Goff, who. Uh, was ahead of Britt, was tied uh, for sixth this year in touchdowns, was fourth this year in passing yards on a team that was tied for the second best record with the young head coach in Sean McVay, who's now being deemed the genius. And we put our, we're, we're finding ourselves in a storyline that's actually kind of cool, but I think everybody's, it's not as sexy as some people thought because here we got the Patriots back again as usual. Doing it as they've always done since this decade, which is a 10-year thing for those of you that don't know. So that's 2010 to 2020. But right now, we're going to go from 2010 to 2019. The Patriots have found themselves in the Super Bowl five years out of the, the nine that we've, are, uh, we've been in so far. They've, in 2011... 2019, they've been to the playoff, they've been to the Super Bowl five times. You got teams that haven't even seen the Super Bowl once. And in fact, it just came up the other day. Tom Brady has been to the Super Bowl more times than four NFL teams. That's in, that's crazy if you think about it. You know what I mean? It just blows your mind. 
And you got this Rams team who hasn't been to the Super Bowl since losing to the Patriots in 2001, 2001, 2002 season. And that team was led by, it was the same thing. A young quarterback taking on an aging quarterback. At the time, Tom Brady, the young quarterback. The older quarterback was Kurt Warner. How crazy was that? And now we're finding ourselves in reverse roles. Where you got to ask yourself, who gets the leverage here? Who wins it out? Well, it's funny you should say that because we're going to touch on that in the second half of the uh, the uh, segment two of the show where I pick who wins. I give you the odds. I give you the picks. I tell you all, I break it down by the players and I break it down by the numbers. Hey, this is Downright Sports, the Super Bowl show. All right, so normally most shows, this segment will be considered the topic, but it's not. It's just a Super Bowl preview show, so we're just going to keep it going. Anyway, uh, the Super Bowl, if you don't know, if for some reason you picked this show up in the second part, <laughs> the Rams are going to take the, um, excuse me, the 13-3 and Rams will take on the 11-5 and New England Patriots, two teams who basically made it to the Super Bowl based on pure controversy, which I meant to say this in the last segment, if the, there's so much talk of the passing of the torch, and wouldn't it be crazy? Wouldn't it be interesting? It would be almost like somebody wrote it themselves, but wouldn't it be pretty cool if the Rams were to win the Super Bowl and they start their dynasty running the same way the Patriots did? And you're like, Brent, what the heck are you talking about? The Patriots, when they started their run, it started on controversy, the forward pass rule. It was everybody thought it was a fumble, but they said it was a forward pass, and then the Tom Brady um, legend begins. For the uh, Rams, they had a call that was a blatant pass interference call that was overlooked, thus giving the Rams the go ahead to beat the Saints and start now potentially their run. I think that'd be pretty cool if that were to happen because now all you Patriot haters, because you think they cheat. What's going to be an excuse for the Rams? The Rams got away with one. So, you know, look yourself in the mirror. Every time you point a finger, there are three pointing back at you, including the middle finger. How about that? Anyway, so the Super Bowl is uh, this Sunday, and the Westgate odds have it where New England is minus two and a half. The over-under is 56 points. They believe they're going to score over 56 points, meaning if you're betting, uh, I suggest you take the over in this because why do you ask? I tell you. The, looking at these teams by the numbers, and you're saying to yourself, well, Brent, you always complain about nerds and analytics. Well, in this case, I'm not breaking down no advanced statistic. I'm just going based on what I've seen and what I'm reading. So if you look at it from this standpoint, both teams are potent when it comes to offense. The Rams are second in offense. The Patriots are fourth. The Rams are uh, fifth in passing. The Patriots are eighth. The Rams are third in rushing. The Patriots are fifth. That was actually impressive. Now, here's where everything changes. I thought the Rams had a better defense than what they do, but they really don't because the Rams, to me, I felt like with Aaron Donald, Dominic, and Sue and them guys, that they just be gangbusters and blowing stuff up. Well, completely wrong. They're 20th in overall defense, 14th in passing defense, 23rd in rushing defense, and 20th in scoring defense. Why is that significant? Well, I'll tell you. Because if your defense and numbers are numbers, you say what you want, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't, you got to ask yourself this. If your defense is rated that low, what you think Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are thinking? And I know everybody's like, well, Brady's just going to go out there and sling that thing. Not really. Because if you pay attention to the Rams and Chiefs, I mean, the Patriots and Chiefs game, what did the Patriots do? They ran the ball a lot. And with a 23rd rushing defense, I can see that. I can see Belichick sitting back and putting the ball in his running back's hands and moving that thing down the line. Now, you're saying to me, well, the Rams got an explosive offense. Eh, if you look here, the Patriots, unlike the Rams, are in the top 10 in overall defense. They're seventh. Now, they're passing defense. They are 22nd. But in rushing defense, which is the strength of the Rams, they are 11th. 
That's a spot below 10, kids, meaning the Patriots' defense is going to be more prepared, more poised, and ready for whatever the Rams are going to try to throw at them. Because the Rams, two key players. You got Jared Goff and you got Todd Gurley. And Gurley ain't been himself since he got hurt. So you talk about you got C.J. Anderson. I think, see, you you giving Bill Belichick two weeks to prepare for your two key backs, your two key opponents on offense, and you're looking back and you're saying to yourself, well, we just got to sit back and we'll let Goff try to beat us. We'll, we're going to put the ball in the young rookie's hand, well, not rookie, but the young quarterback's hands to try to beat us. And anytime those odds happen, I always, always have to side on the faith of the Patriots. Now, with that being said, maybe Sean McVay is sitting back and he's got some master scheme. But so far, nobody has been able to outthink or outdo the Golden Boy, or AKA the GOAT, or Bill Belichick, AKA the GOAT. Now, if you paid attention, I've told you all, I've told you all postseason who's gonna win. I got one game wrong. I thought the Bears, I thought the Bears could beat the, the Eagles. And they should have if it wasn't for a touch of a finger and a kicker not doing his job. But with that being said, I know you want me to pick the Rams. I'm not. I'm picking the Patriots. I believe the Patriots not only will win, I think the Patriots will win by five. It's a weird number. But I think they're gonna I think the Patriots got it. I think it's gonna be a a a a, a a competitive game, but I think from start to finish, if the Patriots and Tom Brady, they got something to prove. Last year, they lost to the Eagles the way they lost to them. They are trying to make a point. They want that number six. How cool would that be? Brady gets six. Jordan's got six. Nobody else comes close to those guys. That's the two comparisons. So, sorry. Jared, Sean McVay, this is not your year. You'll be back again next year. But right now, the Patriots win one more, one more, and that's it. Brady may play until he's 45, but this is it, kids. This is it. All right, when we come back in segment number three, um, the post game, talk about the halftime show. Downright Sports. So, uh, this halftime show this year is Maroon 5 uh, featuring Big Boy and uh, Travis Scott. Yeah, forgive me if I'm not overwhelmed or uh, jumping for joy. I think the NFL has dropped the ball on the idea of the halftime show. Um, I think they try to pick popular groups, but that are safe. And I don't know if you could do that. I think, in a, you know, the NFL, like the WWE, tries to play that family thing. But it's about violence. I mean, let's just call it like we see it. It's, you know, guys trying to hurt each other. Just, you know, just say what you want. But try to knock the snot out of one another and win. And to be honest with you, for my halftime shows, I would like, you know, let's have something. You know, let's have something relevant. Now, the show was in Atlanta. And it was plenty of artists from Atlanta we could have had. You know, uh, number one, NFL. You kind of got a little PR issue. Uh, comedy. And I understand. But if the NFL would have reached out. And you would have got the best. And I know this has been a top, a lot of people have said this, but like if you would have got like Ludacris, the Migos, Little John, um, um, who else is from Atlanta? Uh, T.I. T.I. would have been huge. Jeezy. Because what one thing about Atlanta, that is a pro, pro hip hop crowd. Even if you went with a gospel group, you could have made that work. But I'm not, a, I, I'm not going to watch it. Now, the cool thing is, what's funny is the WWE is doing their own halftime show. And so do other people. They do, like, these puppy bowls and stuff like that. I may watch one of those. Well, I'm thinking we're going to a, a Super Bowl party. I'm not 100% sure. But the point is, uh, I'm not a... The Maroon 5, Travis Scott, and Big Boy, it just looks weird. The names don't even go together. Hell, I know she's tough, but you could have got Cardi B. She's the most popular... Uh, performer on the the face of God's green earth right now. Now you're probably afraid you want her twerking on the stage, but newsflash: you got twelve, you got kids that are eight are twerking. It, it just is what it is, guys. You, you, you can't continue to to to, to step on eggshells and at the same time give everybody a finger. Like it's pretty much what you're doing. Anyway, 
enough of me. Post game is just turning into me ranting and complaining. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Um, check out the Super Bowl again. I'm picking the Patriots. I'm not changing my pick. Last year I was right. So far I've been doing pretty good. I'm just saying. Just saying. Hey, today's music uh, was by uh, the one and only DJ Chase. If you go to his new YouTube channel, Chase Got Beats, check it out. Watch it, like it, subscribe to it. Same here. Hit the button at the bottom. Hit the thumbs up. Do it all. Thumbs up me. Bot uh, hit bottom down. Subscribe. Thumb bottom. Subscribe. That's right. Uh, also, one of the, uh, the the theme song of the show, Downright Sports, the theme that you, uh, what you hear right now, and in the title song by N2G, Mike Myth. Um, he has no YouTube channel. He's working on this stuff. And uh, hit us up at Instagram, Downright Entertainment. Go to Instagram, Downright Entertainment. Like it. Subscribe to it. Keep it going. All right. Deuces, everybody.